This is the IELTS listening test. You will hear a number of different recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four parts. At the end of the test, you will be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Now turn to part one. Part one. You'll hear a telephone conversation between a Children Art Craft Center agent and a customer. First, you have some time to look at questions one to six. Listen carefully and answer the questions 1 to 6. Good afternoon, Holborn Children Art and Craft Centre. May I help you? Oh yes, hello there. I'm interested in the children's handcraft class. Can I have a little more information, please? Do you mean the art and building workshops? Yes, a friend of mine mentioned them. Your company workshop is offering a creative mind through painting and building. Is that right? Yes, of course. Um, first of all, we run the class every Friday between 1pm and 2.30pm after our lunch break. Good. And what ages are the classes available to? Well, children aged 5 to 7 are fine, but all children should be accompanied by a parent. Fine, of course. So how much is the class? Let's see. It's £15 per child with £3 off for over two children from the same family. Oh yes, that's very reasonable. And where exactly in the main hall are they held? They're in the centre of the hall. Could you give me the full address? Yes, it's Amherst House. Right. And that's on Glasgow Street. Could you spell that for me please? Sure. G-L-A-S-G-O-W Street. Thank you. Lovely. We have a security entrance, so you should press the red button for going outside. Don't press the black button, please. It's for staff only. OK. And one more question. Is there any parking available nearby? The back of the garden is probably the best place to park. The parking charge is £2 per hour. OK. Would it be possible to book it now? Yes, certainly. You can do that at the Information Centre. Great. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at the questions 7 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 7 to 10. Do you also offer art programmes? Sure. I will give you information about the next two art workshops. On October the 17th, there's a warship building workshop. Oh, that sounds great. We will be using clay, so just make sure the child is wearing suitable clothing. I know. I'm sure they will be making a terrible mess. So what is the other programme then? 
Well, it's coming at the end of this month on Saturday. That'll be the thirty-first of October, won't it? Yes, that's right. On that day, there's going to be a Caribbean jungle theme. This is where kids make scenes with trees, rocks, animals, and so on. Oh, is that safe? Yes, it is. Don't worry. They'll just be using different kinds of paper, you know. They're good materials for making jungle backgrounds, rocks, and things like that. Okay, I see. The workshop sounds really good, and I'll call you back after talking about it with my husband. Lovely. Thanks very much for ringing. That is the end of part one. You now have one minute to check your answers to part one. Part two. You hear a tracking program, backpacking trip for the world. First, you have some time to look at questions, eleven to eighteen. Now listen carefully, and answer the questions eleven to eighteen. Hello, um, my classmates and I, um, we are travelling from Asia. We are staying here in London for a couple of days, and we need to know about the local bus or sightseeing bus services. Actually, we're hoping to do a few excursions in London. Okay, well, I can give you lots of details about all sightseeing buses going from Leicester Square in the centre of London. This leaflet will be very helpful for you, but I can tell you some of the main things. We're here on Tottenham Court Road. You can save some money and do a bit of exercise by walking down Charing Cross Road for about fifteen minutes. There are movie theaters and many souvenir shops around there. Are there any local buses that go there? Actually, we're exhausted and have lots of unpacking to do. Sure, you can take the three eight one or one o eight bus from across the road. It takes about five minutes. Or you could take the tube and head south on the northern line. But remember, the tube is more expensive than the bus. It's up to you. Thanks. By the way, is the British Museum around here? A friend of my friend recommended it to me. It is a great building in the UK, isn't it? Yes, it's so big. It's just around the corner, three minutes by foot. There are a number of interesting exhibitions. Basically, the Great British Museum is a museum of splendid heritage, human history, and culture in London. So its collections, the number of which is more than seven million objects, or so, 
are among the largest and most comprehensive in the world, and originate from all continents, illustrating and documenting the story of human culture from its beginning to the present. Amazing! Seven million objects. How much is the entrance fee? It's free of charge. Really? Why? I'm just wondering. Because the British government manages the national culture policy for educational tourism and culture services. Okay, I see. So I'll go there first. Before you hear the rest of the program, you have some time to look at the questions nineteen to twenty. Now listen and answer questions nineteen to twenty. Anything else? Every year, our university runs an international backpacking contest as part of a scholarship, so we are travelling across Europe. Our team won the contest last year, so our project plan is to understand and learn something about European countries' culture. After travelling, we should hand in a report to the authority of the university. Great, I will give you my company email address. If you need help, contact me any time. You got a pen? Thank you so much indeed. Jonathan. Dot. Rose. At. London Travel Guide. Dot. Co. Dot. Uk. Say again, please. How do you spell your name? Okay, J O N A T H A N. Right, I got it. I really appreciate your kindness, Jonathan. No problem. Any time. Bye. Enjoy your trip. Cheers. Bye. That is the end of part two. You now have thirty seconds to check your answers to part two. Part three. You hear a conversation between student Tom and a tutor about a marketing mix program. First, you have some time to look at questions twenty-one to twenty-six. Now listen carefully, and answer the questions twenty-one to twenty-six. Hi, Tom. How have you been getting on with your coursework on the marketing mix? So far, so good, and I've been trying the varied approaching of the targeting last group for studying. Can you tell me how the coursework is going? Well, we agreed on four main targets for the marketing mix. Such as product, price, place, and promotion, to find out about how to do suitable data analysis in various markets. Okay, go on, Tom. At first, we separated both tangible services and intangible services. 
Can you give me some examples of tangible and intangible business models? Um, a tangible model is mass-produced or manufactured on a large scale with a specific volume of units. On the other hand, an intangible model is service-based, such as the culture and tourism industry, or electronic products such as the mobile phone companies. That's right. But I got several questions about that. Actually, I need to talk to a lecturer. Oh right, I'll help you. Who do you want to meet? Catherine March. Do you know her? She's in the business centre. Yes, of course. She's the head course leader there. Yes, she was very helpful and so kind. Oh, that's good. Did she give out anything in particular? Yeah, she recommended a marketing textbook called Marketing Mix and Strategy, written by Robin Kelly, and she also suggested I should book a couple of practice sessions using Marketing Practical System. Okay, I'm sure you'll find them useful. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at the questions twenty-seven to thirty. Now listen and answer questions twenty-seven to thirty. And of course, do you know what is related to marketing mix? Sure, it's the four C's. I was just wondering about that actually. Hmm, it's for a customer-focused marketing mix known as the four C's: commodity, cost, channel, and communication. So. What is the actual meaning of them? Right, commodity is the product for consumers, and cost is normally spending money or expenses, like selling cost, product cost, and purchasing cost. And channel means a flow or doing process. The last one is communication, which smoothly operates as give and take during marketing. Are you following me, Tom? Yes, it's still a little unclear. Actually, I need to do some further reading on the concept of marketing. Oh yes, well I got hold of a copy of the McCarthy and I thought it was great, but the campus bookshop said it was out of stock. The library has an old version, but is not as useful, and I'm afraid I've lent my copy to another student. I'll give it to you next week when I get it back. Okay, Tom. Thank you. No problem. Anyway, your writing style is very clear, and you've included lots of interesting, personalised explanations of your target area, and you've just got a couple of solutions for some additional cases on targeting. They are not too bad. I see. Could I just ask, which reference book would you recommend? Well, I'd go for something like Critical Analysis Review. Have you heard of it? Well, it's the first time I've heard that title. It's about markets within different zones and contains statistics on their specific areas of work. Oh, well, I can get them from the online journals too. Great. Clearly, I think you should aim to cite more research data published later than two thousand and five. Okay, that's not so difficult. When do you want that done by? Oh, relax, Tom. Take your time. Um, you should complete it by the end of this term, and I think you should note down its main draft proposal. Yeah, well, I'll certainly try. When would the deadline be for that? My advice would be to get it done before you begin the research. Okay, I'll do that then. See you soon. Good for you, Tom. That is the end of part three.
You now have 30 seconds to check your answers to part 3. Part 4 You'll hear part of a lecture given by an anthropology professor. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer the questions 31 to 40. Tonight I'm going to talk to you about the history of tea. These days there are lots of chances to drink tea. Perhaps you enjoy drinking ready-made tea. Tea has been an important part of traditional hospitality rules all over the world for several centuries. Tea originated in China and was so popular that hundreds of people operated ceremonies in Eastern Asia. In Europe, tea was first imported by British sailors through northwestern Europe. It was then delivered by Dutch maritime traders in the 16th century. At that time, tea became available via Moscow from the Far East to Europe. Tea also stood for independence, as shown by the symbol of the American Eagle from the Boston Tea Party. In the last 400 years, tea leaves became available and practical throughout Asia and Europe. But the way people drank tea was changed a little. The Chinese regarded the quality of the leaves and utilised them as a vital part of their medical care. Other people added hot water, milk, sugar, spices like cinnamon and herbs like mint or sage to their tea. The variations of tea are unlimited. For instance, sesame oil is added to milky tea on chilly mornings in western Sudan. Unlike coffee, English tea has acquired a good reputation as a therapeutic drink that enhances the body condition. Actually, in European and Arabic countries, as well as in the Middle East and Russia, tea was considered a restorative and health-giving plant for a long time. According to Cornelius Blancart, a physician from Holland, mentioned that to keep good health, people should drink at least eight cups a day. However, over 50 cups a day could cause severe health problems. While European coffee houses were frequented by men for things such as business meetings, middle class women spent the tea time with guests in the house. With the arrival of the 19th century, the price of tea decreased and the common people took the chance to drink tea with enthusiasm. Luxury tea was sold in tea bags, which were made of cotton to suit the upper classes. Nowadays, although tea and coffee consumption has become a significant part of society, a few Islamic groups prohibit drinking tea because it contains the stimulant caffeine. From the Middle Eastern tradition of the nomadic Bedouin, guests are served with tea topped with cardamom and glasses of sugared tea, refilled by the host in the guest tents. For over 1,000 years, Arab traders have been bringing the tea culture of Islamic customs to northern and western Africa. The tea was boiled with a lot of sugar for a long time. In India, tea drinking keeps an important custom of daily life going. 
The Indians are accustomed to drinking it with milk. Chai, as they call it, means boiling milk, adding tea, sugar, and some spices. This process of making tea has spread throughout the world. Surprisingly, the custom of making tea mixed with milk or water in cafes has been carried over to the preparation of instant beverages. Today, at conferences and seminars in Britain, tea remains the most commonly served beverage. Okay, that's the end. Are there any questions so far? That is the end of part four. You now have one minute to check your answers to part four. That is the end of the listening test. In the IELTS test, you would now have ten minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet.